Hi guys, welcome to the structure of prokaryotic cells and of viruses. So, in terms of the specification, uh, we will be looking at the prokaryotic cells as being much smaller than eukaryotic cells. There are main differences between the prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, which we will be looking at. And we also will be looking at the structure of the virus, which is uh, an acellular and non-living part. So uh, here we've got a quick question. So we've got the diagram that show, shows outer, uh, outer layers of three different cells, A, B, and C. And what's the evidence from diagram that cell B is an animal cell, cell C is a prokaryotic cell, and explain how would you calculate the magnification of cell C. So my advice for questions like this <coughs> is to start from the middle. Okay, so for instance, here, okay, we've got only one layer, so it has to be cell membrane, cell surface membrane. Here we've got one, two, okay, and here we've got one, two, three layers, okay. So evidence for cell B then, they don't have a cell wall, they only have plasma membrane. Cell C then, okay, has a capsule, so that layer number three, okay, it's a capsule. And explain how we could uh, work out the magnification so uh, here obviously we need to use the correct approach and what will be the approach so uh, we need to obviously we've got the bar here which we can measure then we then measure the uh, the length of the cell and in that way we can do a quick proportion and work out the uh, real size of this cell. There are many different questions on the magnification, so you can have a look at the methods of studying cells video that will be more on the magnification there. So there is a, a structure of the bacterial cell. So in terms of the main differences is the circular DNA. Uh, obviously, they've got the cytoplasm, they've got ribosomes, but they are smaller. So we've got here 70 S ribosomes. We've got plasmid, which is a circular loop of DNA. We've got cell surface membrane, we've got cell wall, and we've got capsules. So those are those layers that we were talking about. And we've got flagellum. So in terms of the uh, prokaryotic cells, uh, bacteria will occur in every habitat. Cell wall is made of murinin, so that's important. A capsule of uh, mucky like unis, slime around the cell walls. We've got 70 as small ribosomes. Store food uh, reserves as glycogen uh, molecules and oil droplets. We've got circular strands of DNA and plasmid. So typical questions are asking you how the bacteria will divide. So the process of division, it's called binary fission, which we were looking at in a video uh, on uh, um, cell cycle and mitosis. The replication of circular DNA will take place, division of cytoplasm to produce two daughter cells, and each cell will have a single copy of circular DNA. So those are the differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells which you've got in your book. But when it comes to past paper questions, they're not necessarily going to ask you about those. Okay, so for saying that a human cell will have the mitochondria but bacteria not, or human cells will have a um, lysosome for bacteria not, or whatever, you're not going to get marks for each of those individual little things. We're going to get marks. It's more advanced stuff. So easy mark comes from the uh, from the fact that bacteria is much smaller. That bacteria has a cell wall, but human does it. The bacteria lacks the nucleus, but human has a nucleus. But look what's here. You're comparing. So what's really important? Because it's so easy that question. But you need to come with the approach of having two aspects. So if they asking you to compare those two things. Make sure that in each of the sentences you mention both. Okay, so then uh, bacteria lacks membrane bound organelles, but human has membrane bound organelles like um, uh, roof endoplasmic reticulum, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, and Golgi body, um, um, mitochondria, all of those coming here to one box. Okay, 
bacterial ribosomes are smaller than humans, so 70 and 80s. Finally, we're talking about DNA here. So bacteria has a circular DNA. DNA in human, it's linear. And bacterial DNA, it's naked. Where the human's DNA, it's bound with histones, proteins, histones. So DNA and histones makes a complex called chromatin. So here are a few questions. So give a piece of evidence that supports the uh, uh, theory that mitochondria evolved from prokaryotic cells. So what we need to remember about those, the mitochondria in human cells will have a small circular DNA and they also will have their own ribosomes. The DNA is not associated with histones and we don't have introns on those non-coding sequences. And what's the advantage? So why would mitochondria have those things? So we need to think about the process that takes place in mitochondria, which is aerobic respiration. So able to respire aerobically to make ATP. Okay, and give two structures which bacterial cell might have. Okay, but white blood cell will not. White blood cell, it's a uh, example of the cells that you're going to have in humans. So what you're going to do, just compare those two, like we did in our previous question. So all of those things you can now easily uh, include in your answer. So nothing changes here. So here we've got the bacteria and you need to give the function of organelle X and Y. So X, it's uh, looking at the ribosomes, so protein synthesis. Why it's flagellum, so the movement. Give two ways in which structure of this bacterium is similar to the cell of uh, lining in the human uh, small intestine. So again, you're just comparing those two. So what's the similarity? Cytoplasm, ribosomes, phospholipids, membrane. Okay, those things we're going to have in common. And give two ways in which structure will then differ. So again, same answers as before, cell wall, capsule, flagellum, mesosomes, uh, not nucleus, uh, not Golgi body, okay, smaller ribosomes. So viruses now, uh, non-living uh, uh, particles. So what's here, okay, the genetic material, which is really important, it's RNA, it's not DNA. Uh, we've got enzyme, which is uh, called reverse transcriptase, so it's used here to make a DNA from RNA, we've got matrix, okay, uh, around we've got the lipid envelope, attachment proteins, which are really important to recognize the T helper cells, and uh, genetic material and reverse transcriptase are enclosed in capsid. So, as we've mentioned, it's uh, acellular, non living, uh, contain nucleic acids. Well, uh, here with the DNA, I would uh, just uh, remove this for now because the virus doesn't have DNA, has an RNA, but can produce DNA using RNA and reverse transcriptase. They multiply within the host cells, which is T helper cell, and um, HIV, for example, are further surrounded by a lipid envelope, which has those attachment proteins. So, so they can attach and recognize T helper cell. So, a few questions uh, comparing bacterium and HIV. So, RNA present uh, in both, cell wall only in bacterium, enzymes in both, and capsid only in HIV. So, we've got here a question. So, suggest how defensive enzymes produced by plants destroy bacteria. Okay. Uh, but bacteriophage has a capsid and the bacterium has a cell surface membrane. So what we can say, they will hydrolyze the uh, cell wall, which obviously it's made of murine. Okay, and final checkpoint, we got here a picture, uh, uh, a diagram that shows the bacteria labeled uh, D and E. Okay, so D here, look, it's quite tricky because it's a uh, it's a zoom in kind of circle here. So those dots are uh, ribosomes. But if, for example, somebody could be thinking, right, well, you're actually pointing to the circle, that is the, uh, then a plasmid. Or you also got in within here the, uh, the cytoplasm. But in there is no problem with E, it's a capsule.
what's the function of the cell wall to protection maintain shape 